In this video, we will study about hierarchical clustering methods. So what is hierarchical clustering and how is it different from other approaches? So uh, as you can see in the name itself, there is hierarchy and you can see a small diagram here. So hierarchical clustering means uh, we take many data points and one approach would be to find the closest data points like these two. So merge these two, then next closest are these two. So merge these. Now these two represent one data point, one single cluster. And if these two are closed, merge these two, otherwise these two and so on. So there are two approaches. One is bottom up, which I just showed here. So you start with each data point as a cluster. And then you repeatedly look for two nearest clusters and combine them into one and at some time we will stop we will see those conditions later in the video and the second approach is divisive approach or top down so here we start with all the entire points in, under a single cluster and then we recursively split it into multiple conditions multiple clusters and then finally we will stop somewhere and this first agglomerative clustering hierarchical clustering is more popular and we will be mainly studying that in this video. This is not much popular. So the main operation that we do in hierarchical clustering is combine two nearest clusters into a larger clusters. But this is the main operation, but there are many questions and we need to answer those before we can do the clustering. We need to combine what, uh, how should we uh, represent the cluster, how, when should we stop, uh, what do you mean by nearest cluster. So, we, so there are certain questions which need to be answered before starting the cluster. So first is the representation part. So how do we, do we represent a cluster? One point is fine, but if we have more than one point in a single cluster, how we will represent that? Should I take this point? Should I take this point? Or average of two or some? Uh, some other condition. So we will answer this and then we will see the concept of nearness of clusters. If we have multiple clusters, three clusters, let's say, is this near to this or this near to this? And then finally we need to answer when should we stop. We had seen that we start with each point as one cluster and then we keep merging two nearest clusters into one. But if we keep doing, we will reach to one cluster in the end. So should we go all the way up to one cluster or should we stop somewhere? If we are merging all them, all of them to one cluster, then what is the meaning of clustering? Each of them, we can straight away merge into one. So let's answer all of these questions one by one. So first is the representation part. How do, do we represent a cluster with more than one point? So we will start with a simpler case of Euclidean space and we will also see what we need to modify in order to uh, for the representation to work in non-Euclidean space also. So in the Euclidean space uh, we can have a notion of centroid. We have let's say three points then centroid would be the average of these so it will lie somewhere here. It should, the centroid should lie, let's say here. And this point need not be 2D space. These, each point may be n-dimensional space, x1, x2, xn. So each of these points is an n-dimensional vector. And we can take the average by doing element-wise average and dividing by the number of points. So in Euclidean space, we can represent it using a average or centroid. So the first question is done for Euclidean space. Next, what is the concept of nearness? So we are continuing our discussion in Euclidean space. So we measure the cluster distances by distance between centroid. Now I have let's say point one. This is point one this is point two and let's say there are a few more points uh, 
and let's say this is 3, 4, 5 and 6. So we have 6 points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So here we find the nearest cluster in Euclidean space. It can be Euclidean distance. We see that 1 and 2 are quite near. So we will include them in one cluster and we, we can represent it as this. And then we see that 3 and 4 are also the next nearest. Let's say, so now this will be represented by one point, which will be the centroid, this point. It's the average of 1 and 2. So now we will see the remaining 5. So we had 6 points, we merged 2, we are left with now 5, one less. And this entire cluster will be represented by this one single centroid. Now we need to see which two of these five are nearest. We see that three and four are nearest. So include them in one cluster and now it will be represented by its centroid. So we have merged three and four. So we will merge these two. Next we see that uh, this and this five are the nearest. So we merge this with 5 and now this entire thing is one cluster and let's say the centroid is here. So now we are left with three clusters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and we see that one, two, this cluster is nearest to 6 so we will merge it here and centroid is somewhere here. And now we are left with two clusters. So here we merge this 1, 2 with 6. So let's write 6 this side for convenience. So we are merging this to 6. Now uh, obviously there are two clusters. So if we merge further, we will left, be left with one cluster. So merge this and this. So finally we will end up with one cluster we need to find where to stop and this diagram on the right we call dendrogram and we use this diagram a lot in hierarchical clustering uh, to understand the concepts now we have answered two questions but only for euclidean case but in the case of non-euclidean space uh, we cannot take the average of points and create a centroid the centroid may not be even a valid point in the non Euclidean space. So here the, uh, it's uh, more complicated. So uh, there is uh, the locations we can talk about are the points themselves. So we have 10 points and if we take the average of these, maybe it does not lie in that space also. Or it may be somewhere uh, away from these and not near to these. So by non-Euclidean space, you can mean some other space, like some hyperbolic space. So in Euclidean space, when you join two points, you get a straight line. Here, if you join two points, you may you will get a line like this. And you divide it into grids, all the grids will not be in of the same area. So, so uh, the concept of average and other things don't work exactly the same way here. So instead of that, we need to represent, let's say, this cluster. So instead of taking the average as we did in uh, Euclidean space, we can pick one of these points to represent this whole cluster. So this point, let's say, be picked and it's the representative of this whole cluster. So we are picking a existing valid point in this cluster and on what basis we can pick those points uh, there may be multiple uh, conditions on which we may pick one representative so let's represent the cluster uh, in non-euclidean space as i said earlier we can pick one of the data points itself to represent the cluster and we will call it clustroid. In Euclidean we called it centroid. Here we will call it clustroid. And it will be a data point. Let's say it's closest to other points. So we picked it and we see that if we pick this point 
this is not closest to all the points on average this is farther so better pick some point which is more closer to other points now we will come to this uh, notion of close, closest also uh, so we will revisit it so first let's un understand the nearest nearness of cluster so we will treat clustroid as if it were centroid when computing the distance between clusters and uh, centroid is the average of all data points so it's an artificial point for example in this case uh, the centroid would lie somewhere here, the average of these three points so this is centroid but we said that clustroid will be one of these po data points itself so it seems that this is a good candidate for clustroid because it's in close proximity to this as well as this so this is clustroid so now we understand the notion of centroid and clustroid so now we should uh, understand what is the notion of closest because we used this term in our previous slide where we said that pick that point which is closest to other points within the cluster so there can be uh, many criteria for selecting the closest point one may be that look for the maximum distance of a point with respect to other points in the cluster so it, its one distance is this 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 and this so maximum seems to be this distance so for this point pick this d similarly for other points so we will pick uh, such point so for this point the maximum distance is d or let's say d1 for this point it's d2 similarly for other points we will do the same and we will see that which is the minimum so let's say d3 is less than uh, others d1 or d2 or d4 so the maximum distance of a point to all the other points we pick the minimum of that and we can pick as the definition of closest similarly we can uh, have another criteria we can pick the average distance so we average uh, this distance this distance this distance and this and that will be the value for this point and similarly do for other points and pick the smallest of those similarly we can have other uh, definitions also like sum of a squares of distance as we uh, so these were if in Euclidean space we could have written d1 square d2 square so if we pick uh, the sum of a squares of distance of the with other points and then pick the smallest then that point will be selected as the clustroid or that will be said to be closest to all the other points now we are left with the third and uh, one of the most important conditions or questions called the termination condition that is when should we stop doing the clustering in agglomerative clustering we keep merging the nearest clusters and keep reducing the number of clusters so when should we stop one approach you can take is that pick a number k up front so this can be useful when you know that uh, my data point consists of only these three classes you know that i want to divide uh, a given market segment for a product into three segments one is uh, heavy users light users or medium users kind of this so you know the number of classes that you want to divide your data beforehand so you can pick that number up front and you keep doing the hierarchical clustering and keep reducing the number of clusters and you stop when uh, you reach the number of required clusters and the second uh, approach would be to stop when the next merge would create a cluster with low cohesion or a bad cluster so this cohesion is a measure of goodness of a cluster so we keep merging until we have defined some goodness threshold and if in the next merge that is below that goodness threshold we will stop 
so uh, cohesion can be also uh, defined in different ways so this is diameter so we can either take some threshold on the diameter of merged cluster so by diameter we mean max distance between points so if this is a cluster we see that distance between this point and this point is all seems to be maximum because we will see all the pairwise distances this one this one all such pairs and pick the maximum so this seems to be maximum and this will be the diameter of this cluster similarly radius max distance of a point from centroid or clustroid so whichever point is the clustroid pick the distance of all the points from that clustroid or centroid and pick the maximum of that so that will be the radius of cluster so you can define cohesion in terms of diameter radius or you can take a density based approach so by density we mean number of points per unit volume so if you have a certain number of points in a space and uh, you define or uh, divide the number of points by radius or diameter or some higher power of radius or diameter then you can define density in your way you know, in your own way as per the requirement of the application and you can cluster them based on density if density is more than certain threshold you cluster them we will uh, stop merging when uh, the merge would produce a density that is lower than threshold you have said that the clusters within a cluster the points should be at least so much dense that is or you need some volume there should be at least this number of points but when you so you must have grouped the most dense points earlier and you keep looking for next most dense cluster and when you don't find any such cluster that is when you merge two cluster and the density drops below that value you will stop so that can be a density based approach now let's look at the implementation of hierarchical clustering so the naive implementation uh, would be that at each step we compute pairwise distance between all pairs of clusters then merge so we had seen that initially we have n points and each point is a cluster in itself so we will pick pairwise distance between all points so we will have n multiplied by n plus 1 by 2 such pairs n minus 1 by 2 sorry so this many pairs are possible with n points so we see that it's n square so first step it took some factor of n square time then we are left with n minus 1 points so for n minus 1 points the number of cluster would be n minus 2 divided by 2 so again it's n square and for the next it will be n minus 2 multiplied by n minus 3 by 2 so uh, this is order n cube so if we at every step we take the pairwise distance between all the remaining points then it will be order n cube but you see that this is a naive implementation we have if we have calculated this these pairs earlier and let's say this was the point these these two were the clusters that were merged together so these distances are not changing why are we recalculating them only you need to find uh, the distance of its centroid or clustroid with respect to other points you don't need to modify these so you can do some careful implementation using priority queue and uh, it has been shown that you can reduce it to n square log n complexity from n cube so but still it's uh, too expensive when you have n is very large then it can be a big number n square n log n so that's why it's still too expensive even after Im implementing is it uh, carefully so uh, for very big data sets it's generally not recommended to use the hierarchical clustering instead uh, we will look for other approaches when the data set is very big otherwise it's a, an excellent clustering algorithm